Hey, thanks for uh, thanks for listening in today and being here. I really appreciate it. Today we have a guest here at iLobby. This is an intern, Tyler Scott, who has been working with us for a few weeks, and she'll be on for a few more. A unique thing about Tyler is that she has worked as an intern in Washington, D.C., which is a rare opportunity that a lot of people try to get. And uh, she did it and has a lot to tell us. And so we have questions for her and we want to ask her everything we can and find out about it. And hopefully this will be informative for you. Okay, so why don't we begin? Well, thanks for interviewing me. I really appreciate it. And I've loved working here so far. So I think this will be good. Good, 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 good. So the whole aspect of becoming an intern in Washington is pretty interesting. A lot of people think Washington is really messed up and it doesn't work. But when I've talked to people who've worked there, they said it's a totally different game. Mm -hmm. Once you're inside, it's actually pretty interesting, exciting, intellectually challenging, etc. So let me ask you, what drew you to becoming an intern? How did that start? Yeah, so um, at Santa Clara University, where I go to school, there's a program with the Poli Sci office. And so um, it's a part-time internship, part-time student at American University. And it was offered at the same time where most people, junior year, fall quarter, would go abroad. And this was my substitute for going abroad. And the well, so I knew I was going to DC, but the reason why I wanted to intern specifically for Congress and not for a think tank or a business while I was there is because it all seemed like a, not a fairy tale, but more of something very vague. I didn't really know. Washington. Yeah, yeah. Not even Washington, but what happens in Congress? What do they do all day? Yeah. What, how does the country run? So it seemed very um, big picture and I wanted to get inside and see the nitty gritty part of it. Good, good. So how did you actually get the job? Did you fill in an application at the university or what happened? Yeah, so um, a lot of universities have databases where employers who are looking for new interns or employees can post. And so American University, where I was going to be in DC, had one of those. And so uh, a job offer was posted for an internship for the House Majority Whip, um, Steve Scalise. And so I applied via American University's job portal, but they also had it on their website, and you can go to any website for any member and find an internship opportunity. Interesting. Were there other ones that you applied for, or did you just select that one because it was in that, you know, arena? Yeah, so um, that was the odd one out, actually. So what I did is I went to, I went on Google, and I googled all of the members for California because that's where I'm from. And on their website, they have application processes. And so I went through all of them for all the members in California. And I got offered a couple internships for congressmen who are from California. Hmm. But this one was unique because it wasn't the district office. It was the WHIPS office. So it um, handled party leadership issues in combination with legislative legislat issues and it was in the co the Capitol building rather than across the street yeah explain what that is the whips office versus a district office versus you know I don't know legislative office or something yeah so um, in DC at least there is the Capitol building and in the Capitol building there's the speaker's office the whips office and the leader's office for both the House and the Senate and then the senators also have offices um, in the actual Capitol building and across the street. And then for the House members, their main district offices are across the street in Longworth and Cannon, uh, which are the name of the buildings that are, uh, and Rayburn, those are the three office house buildings. So they're across the street, and depending on how many years you've been in Congress and how many people are in your office or in your district, the size of the office varies. There are very small offices um, across the street, and those were the kind of people that I would be working for if I went for like a local congressman, right. um, a small office, very like uh, stereotypical political issues, uh, talking to your constituents, figuring out what they need solved and working on that. And then for the WHIPS office, it's focused on uh, party leadership and a coherence within the party in terms of knowing that if you have enough people behind an issue, you can really have an impact. So I think one of the main things that our office focused on was making sure that if we wanted to get something done, we had the resources in terms of people willing to participate in whatever we need to get done. So that was um, a big part of the WHIPS office was making sure that, yeah, you may have a great idea, but are enough people in line with you? Can you talk to people and convince them to do what you want to do? 
Right. And then when you say um, people, you're talking members. about... Oh, okay. I meant members so of the, Congress. Yeah, yeah, so the members of Congress are trying to convince one another yes, exactly. of their legislation. Yes. So it isn't just, you know, voters coming in and saying, hey, I'd like you to do this or I'd like you to do that. Mm-hmm. That's part of it, right? Yeah. But then the other part is once you're in there yeah. or once the member's in there, he or she has to look at their complete agenda and the bills and the things they're working on and say, wow, I need to get 100 votes for this or yeah. 200 votes. Therefore, I need to go out and start convincing other yes. people. So did you have other members come into your office? Is that where that So uh, there are a couple ways you went about that. Well, first, just about that is that there'll never be a bill brought to the floor if they don't think enough people will vote yes. It'll be a waste of their time. If they know they don't have enough members that are on their side, they won't even bring it up. So there's a lot that goes on before actually bringing a bill to the House floor. Um, I mean, it has to pass through committee. Yeah. Right? So if you have... I mean, if it doesn't get through the committee... Yes. It's not going to go forward. Yeah, no. And in order to get to the committee, there has to be a sense. I mean, do they, you know, put their finger in the air and yeah, say, so- I, you know, I, we know so-and-so agreed to this kind of idea before we think they'll be receptive to it. So they have to know the relationships. Yeah. So um, there's a couple ways they go about this. So the first is just um, personal relationships. So an average day, there was no average day. (laughs) Um, But for example, a task related to this would be bringing... So um, our member, Scalise, was from Louisiana. So Mm -hmm. um, he always had uh, Louisiana-related food. Um, And so we'd have... Um, certain chips called zaps or uh, certain candies, pralines, pralines, depends where you're from, how you pronounce it. But we would bring special items from our office and we deliver it. We go across the street and we go to a member's office in Rayburn or Longworth or Cannon and bring them a gift from our office as a gesture from the WIPS office. So it would be um, little things like that, but also we did a lot of event planning. So we had um, a dinner for the members of the Republican Party every Monday. So every Monday night, and so we had, in addition to our office, we also had our own room, um, the Lincoln Room, which was in the Capitol building, which had a full-size kitchen. So we would host dinner for all the members in the party so that they could actually sit down all together around a table informally. So it wasn't a meeting, it wasn't on the house floor, but it was a place and a space where they could discuss um, how to be friends with one another yeah. and also the work that they want to get done and whether or not someone's on board with a bill. Right. And this would apply, in other words, when you went to like Longworth or some of the other buildings, you weren't necessarily looking at only party lines. You weren't no. only looking at Republicans. You were looking at every member regardless of party. Yeah. Is that right? Yes, very true. So you'd true. say, hey, look, let's. there's Democrats who believe in this idea. Let's, you know, yeah. bring um, them in too. Along okay. the lines of being on different parties, uh, most of the Democrats that we would target would be in our area. So from New Orleans, from mm-hmm. Louisiana. So um, areas are kind of like their own parties. Yeah. So that is mixed of Democrats and Republicans. So those they, they sometimes type. become caucuses yeah, too, exactly. don't they? Yes, exactly. You know, like there's the Black Caucus mm-hmm. and yeah. the Hispanic Caucus, and there's a, a bunch of them. Yeah. Right. right. Exactly. But those so, are informal groups. Yeah. So is that even correct? though, yeah, they're informal. So even though mm-hmm. we may be working for the Republican Party, like the the head of it, then we still reach out to Democrats based on what the bill is, what the issue is, and what we want to be accomplished. Interesting. Maybe you can talk a little bit about what an average... I know you said that (laughs) there was no average day because it's changing all the time. But I don't even know how to ask that. Is there an atypical day? But is there a day where it's like, this is the kind of things I would do in the morning. I would come in at, you know, what time you came in? Who did you meet? What time did you break? How long did you go for? I've heard that, um, you know, sometimes people are working, you know, whatever, 12, 14, 16 hour yeah. days, really long days, yeah. right? So there's two different kinds of days. There's days when Congress is in session and out of session. <laughs> so when Congress is in session, we get an 8 a.m. Um, what's very important is that the newspapers are all updated for that day. So we have to have on the member's desk um, every newspaper for that day so he knows exactly what's happening in the world because our news is the world news and the world news is our news. So he needs to be up to date on everything and every morning he reads every paper, no matter if it's um, biased towards one party or another, he knows what's going on in the world. So that was our main task in the morning, um, which is informing the whip. And then as the day goes on, 
The whip has a bunch of meanings and they're all very fast. Um, so we yeah, need to talk look, about how yeah. fast that is. Yeah. Because I don't think people realize how short these are. Yeah, they're very, very short meanings. You have, because he's so busy, um, maybe 15 minutes, 15, 30 minutes, 10 maybe even 10 to pitch and your sometimes idea. in the hall too, yeah right? yeah very informal no space. yeah exactly uh meetings he had a couple rooms where he could have meetings in his office um it was kind of a section of a floor so there was a conference room where he had meetings but he also had informal meetings in his personal office and we're talking to people in the hallways of the capitol building um but so because we did um stuff related to the district and stuff related to being the whips office uh, we would either be doing research for someone he was meeting or research for an issue that was coming up in terms of his district. So um, something about flooding would happen, we'd do research on that. Or it could be someone he's meeting. So one day he was meeting with um, someone from a different country. So we had to research etiquette in that country, how he should interact with this person and the important issues in that person's country so that the whip is informed when he talks to him. So that was one part in average day. The other part would be the whip party planning part. So basically it's a way to talk to other members uh, to know who's on board with what bill. And we held a lot of informal events. So our job was literally planning events for the members of the party to get together, um, whether it be the one every week where it's the dinner or if it was for a specific holiday, if it was for someone's birthday, whenever there is an event, we were planning it. So there were two sides to an average day. Interesting. And then you had social events in the evening too? Yes. Or what so um, on the Hill, there are about... I don't know, give or take 20 receptions a week. <laughs> and so there's an email list that goes out and you can see who's hosting it, why they're hosting it, um, if there's a cause, who's invited. And so they're either in the Capitol building in rooms around the Capitol building or they're um, across the street at a cafe or at a Mexican restaurant. And so um, there's a lot, a lot of afterlife that goes on on the hill which is working it's not you don't leave the office and you go hang out with friends you leave the office and you go to reception mm -hmm. and you're talking to people and you're making connections and it's always 24 7 working yeah interesting mm -hmm. and so how long did you do that for um i was there for four or five months okay yeah this was in your junior year yeah it was at the beginning of my junior year of college yeah yeah interesting so um that sounds like a very hectic schedule, you know? <laughs> yes. But would you do it again? A hundred percent. I'm actually going back to DC um, by choice for no reason uh, to visit all the people that I met and the office that I worked in and the professors that I studied with and to go back to the places in DC that really make the country <laughs> run. Um, so my favorite part was how close everything is. So the Supreme Court is directly across the street from the Capitol building. And so um, you can physically see like, oh, these are the different branches. I mm -hmm. know where the White House is from where I am right here. And so much happens in such a small radius um, that you can have an impact on it, even if you're an intern. And so I would 100% recommend anyone to do it. And I yeah. would do it again. Yeah, yeah. Huh. <clears throat> So um, you feel that, you know, what you did there and what you learned was invaluable, I guess. I mean, in other words, you probably, when you came into it, didn't know a ton of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then it was like trial by fire. Yeah. I had no idea <laughs> what I was doing. So before I interned there, that was my first internship. I had worked in jobs. I had worked in sales and retail, but I never been an intern until this. And I was uh, a little timid going into it as a first internship because it seemed like a lot and it was a lot, but it's definitely learned by trial and error. And I started with other people, um, but it was definitely valuable in that there's a lot of talk about Congress and whether or not they do anything and yeah. you're there and you see them doing stuff 24 seven. So I think there's a big gap between people saying Congress doesn't get anything done and being in Congress and seeing stuff happen all the time. And there's definitely a gap in between where people need to collaborate in order to become part of what gets done or else they don't see anything happening. Yeah. And it, why do you think people say that? Is it because the media doesn't report on, except only on the accomplishments? Or 
I mean, I, I, I agree with you because I've been there and seen that people are very busy. They're working on things and stuff seems to be happening and they're very dedicated and they're informed about decisions and issues that they're working on. Um, yet when you sit back and you fly home or go wherever, you, you, you look at it and you think the media makes it look like, oh, they're all incompetent. They're not getting anything done. Congress is at a stalemate, you know, loggerheads, you know. Yeah. It's like two different worlds. Yeah, right? it is. They're very <clears throat> isolated. I think there's a couple reasons. One, it may not be, they might be working on something really hard, but it might not be something that directly affects that person. Um, and the other part linked to that is that it may indirectly affect you every day and you have no idea. Like the products that you use, the food that you eat, the places you go, everything is impacted by the decisions that are made in Congress and the laws that surround the littlest, the smallest things in life. So it may not seem like they're getting stuff done, but it's also at the same time, they work on big issues, which is what you see in the news, but they work on every issue mm -hmm. um, that people may not notice. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you were there at a time, I believe, preceding uh, the event with uh, Representative Scalise. Yeah. Um, but you're certainly familiar with that. Maybe you could touch on that. This is the yeah, baseball actually, incident that yeah, happened in so July that of 17. Yeah, is related to what we were talking about earlier about um, you don't bring a bill to the floor unless you know there's enough votes on it. How do you know if someone will vote for that bill? You talk to them. You go to lunch with them. You bring them a gift from your office or we party plan and we host events. So this was one of those things that we would plan and host. So when I was there, we had a basketball game. And so it's Republicans versus Democrats, but super lighthearted. Everyone has a blast. It's basketball. All the proceeds go to good charities. Kids are involved. It brings the community together. And that's also a way where you have those informal relationships. Kind of like I was talking with the receptions, you're working 24 seven. It's not like you show up in the Capitol building, you work from eight to six or nine, probably nine, <laughs> and then you're done. No, you go to the reception or you go to events like this. Um, in this case, it was the baseball game. And so um, they didn't even, it was before the actual baseball game, they were having a practice. So it was members of the Republican party who were practicing for a um, nonpartisan, just fun, everyone involved, game which mm -hmm. is the irony i see in it because they go <laughs> the whoever um i don't remember the name the man who was the shooter but he targeted republicans practicing but the irony is that they're practicing for a game that puts aside politics mm -hmm. that brings people together so i thought his targeting was off in terms of the message he was trying to make but i'm glad uh that scleese has recovered um, and is getting back on his feet. And there's a bunch of interviews with him that everyone should watch that are super inspirational. But that was one of those events when it's politics 24 seven. Right. Um, but that was for a good cause and it happens every so often. So like I said, when I was there, we had the same thing, but it was the basketball version. Right. So just to continue then, as we're wrapping this up, um, You've had this great experience. You're a senior now at Santa Clara. Mm -hmm. uh, you're still in Poli Sci. Mm -hmm. um, what's next? Yeah, so I have a Poli Sci major with a pre-law emphasis and a minor in entrepreneurship. So my goal in terms of going to DC was to see the law, not necessarily politics, because um, I understood that from all my classes, but uh, I have that pre-law emphasis. So I want to go to law school. So my goal there was to literally see how laws are made, what is HR, blah, 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 what's in it, how does that work? And so once I saw the physical laws, then I took it and I went on the other side. I worked for a law firm. I clerked at a law firm in um, Beverly Hills that did entertainment law, but it covered a huge gamut of issues, including intellectual property, which is very popular in Silicon Valley where we are, and which is why I have my um, entrepreneurship minor. So with um, seeing the law made and seeing it used in court and understanding um, Silicon Valley intellectual property. I want to study that in law school and hopefully I'll be attending next fall 2018 and I'm taking the LSAT in December and I'm doing my applications right now. Good, good. No, I think that's, uh, it's great to see, you know, I mean, really anyone sort of understand kind of what's happening on that side yeah. of the equation and then really get into it and realize that there is a way to make change. There is a way to learn about this yeah. stuff 
And once you dive in, it's not so ominous. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's accessible. Yeah. It's, it's and, just... uh, you know, I think the message, I mean, part of what we say is that you can actually get stuff done, but you have to work with government. You have to work with lawmakers. You have to understand issues. And I think that's a really important message. And I think, you know, you've conveyed that very well. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So thanks for coming. Of I course. really appreciate you. Uh, yeah. We're really enjoying you while we have you here I'm for these few weeks. And uh, here in uh, Silicon Valley. Yes, the bubble. <laughs> and, uh, you know, good luck with all the rest of the things that you're Thank doing. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks.